Never before have we had access to such a kaleidoscope of shrimp. We don't even have to leave our homes these days. At the click of a mouse, we can choose the most wonderful shrimp and get them delivered to our door. But if we're not going to visit the store and choose the shrimp ourselves, how do we know we're not going to be disappointed with the shrimp we get? Well, in this video, I've got seven tips for you to follow that should mean you get the shrimp you hoped you ordered. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Richard and I'm a fish and shrimp keeper based in the UK. So as many of you already know, my wife and I spent many years breeding and selling shrimp online. And although we no longer breed and sell shrimp, I wanted to share with you some tips from my end as a breeder and a seller that will hopefully help you as a buyer get the shrimp you hope to get when you buy shrimp online. So let's start with tip number one. And tip number one is to always ask the seller questions. Now, it doesn't matter what question you ask them. Ask them what temperature they keep the shrimp at, what they feed them, do they ship on a Wednesday? The point is not that they provide an answer to the question, but just that they answer a question. And here's the reason why. If a vendor is reluctant to communicate with you before you buy the shrimp, when you're a potential purchaser, before they have their money, if you ask a question before you buy your shrimp and it goes unanswered, what are the chances that once you buy the shrimp and the vendor has your money and your shrimp have a problem, they're going to respond to you. If they're not interested in responding before they've got your money, when your shrimp arrive and half of them are dead, what are the chances they will actually respond to you when you contact them with a the problem? Now, as with all these tips, this is not totally foolproof. A vendor might be fabulous at responding before they get your money. And once they've got your money, you might never hear from them again. But when you put it together with other tips on this list, Hopefully it will help you build up a picture of the person you're ordering shrimp from. Now, tip number two is to take your time and research the people you're buying from. If you've never dealt with them before, then go online and read some reviews. Read what other people have put about that vendor. Now, don't go onto the vendor's own website. Don't look at the reviews on their website because, well, A, anybody can fake reviews and B, they could be curating the reviews and only uploading the good ones to the website and hiding all the bad ones. What you want to do is take the name of the company you're hoping to buy from, put it into Google, run a search, and see what sort of information comes up. Are people talking positively about them on forums? Are they talking negatively? Are they being discussed on Facebook in a positive light or a negative light? What are people saying? If the vendor is selling on eBay, I love eBay because as a seller, you cannot manipulate the feedback you get. There is no way to edit or delete bad feedback. Yes, you can respond, and that's an important point. If you are looking at feedback, let's say you're in a forum and there's a negative post about a vendor and then the vendor chips in and joins in the conversation and puts their point of view across, then maybe you start to see from both sides. If on eBay you've ever looked and you've seen a negative feedback and then the seller has come on and said, well, everything you've said isn't quite true. We did offer you a full refund. We did ask for pictures. You refused to send pictures, whatever it might be. Then you can take all that into account. If, however, you look online, it's just negative, 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 negative. Maybe that's a seller to avoid. But by going out there and researching the company you want to buy from before you place your order, you can start to build up a picture of what other hobbyists say. Now, do bear in mind, typically, if we have a bad experience, we're more likely to go online and talk about it than if we have a positive experience. Very few people get a positive experience and then go online and rave about it constantly. Just because a vendor has one or two bad reviews or bits of bad feedback out there, don't hold it against them. Take it into account, build it up as part of the picture, take that information along with the, whether or not they responded to your questions and you start to build up a picture of whether that's someone you want to buy shrimp from. Now, tip number three is to look into what type of guarantee the vendor offers. Now, most people these days will offer a live arrival guarantee but take time to dig in and see exactly what that means. Now, when my wife and I were selling shrimp, we offered a 100% live arrival guarantee. And we could do that firstly, because we really did take time to perfect our shipping method. And secondly, if somebody bought 10 shrimp, we would pack 12. If somebody bought 20, we'd usually put 24, 25 into the bag. That way, if one or two didn't survive shipping, they still had the number they had ordered. We still had delivered at least 100% live arrival guarantee. And in reality, the cost to us as a vendor of three extra shrimp or four extra shrimp was almost nothing compared to the cost of either an unhappy customer or having to reship. On the one occasion that less than 100% of the shrimp survived, we actually reshipped additional shrimp at our cost. That was incredibly expensive, but it's important to us to make sure the customer's happy. 
whoever you're buying from, you need to find out what their policy is, what their terms are. The chances are they will want a photograph of the dead shrimp in an unopened bag. And that's really important. Once you snip that bag, you may well avoid your guarantee. So do check that out before you start ripping them out and dumping the shrimp into your tank. Also, find out what will they do if it's less than 100%. If some arrive dead, do they just give you the money back? That probably won't include shipping. Do they send you more at their expense? Do they send you more but you pay shipping? Take your time. I know none of us like reading the small print, but look into it, go onto their website, whatever it might be, read their terms and find out what is their guarantee and what will they do for you if the shrimp do not arrive in the condition you're hoping they will. Now, before we move on to the next point, I'm delighted to say I've managed to reopen my five day shrimp keeping email course. Anybody who had signed up previously will know that we had a glitch. My IT guy couldn't work out why the course kept getting stuck at day number four. And I know that's been incredibly frustrating. I know people have signed up and haven't managed to, to join the course. If you've signed up, you should find the emails start flowing. If you haven't, there's a link in the description where you can scan the QR code on screen. And every day for five days, I will send you an email covering a different aspect of shrimp, covering a different aspect of shrimp keeping. The feedback I've had the, has been overwhelming. It's unfortunate we had a glitch, but I think that's fixed. Now, tip number four is to check whether or not the photographs used on the on the vendor's website or whatever page they're using to, to sell their shrimp, do they belong to the vendor? Or has the vendor just gone online and taken a load of photos, perhaps without permission, and suggested that they're their own photos? Now, there's a quick way we can check. And what we can do here is using a computer, simply right click on the image, then select search image with Google. Next, click find image source. Google will then bring up a list of the same image used across the internet. Again, this is not a totally foolproof system because others could have stolen that image from your vendor. So the image might appear multiple times. But again, we can now start to build up a picture of our potential vendor. If when you've run this search, you start to feel like, well, this vendor's not used any of their own pictures, email them and ask them, hi, I see you've used sort of stock images or generic images, could you send me some photos of the actual shrimp I'm going to buy? Any half decent vendor will not mind this at all, will take some snaps, send them to you, and it should be fairly obvious that the images they send, whether they've taken them themselves, quick snaps in the tank, etc., or if they're high quality, high res professional images, the chances are they are just images they've taken from somewhere else as well. Be specific, say, can I see pictures of the shrimp we're buying in your tanks? That's a great way to establish a how the vendor keeps their shrimp, but also whether or not the shrimp they're selling even come close to the images we see online. Typically, a vendor will put the best image they have of their shrimp and you can't fault them for that. They're trying to sell a product. But equally, if their image suggests these are super duper high grade shrimp and in fact, they're fairly mediocre standard cherry shrimp, you'd rather know that before you hand over your hard earned money rather than the day they arrive with you. Now, for tip number five, you want to establish, does the vendor breed the shrimp themselves or are they importing it? And not all vendors are going to be breeding their own shrimp. But typically, those who do will be producing better quality shrimp than those who are importing. But there's also another more important point here, and that is there's a much higher chance that your shrimp will come in with a pest or disease if they're imported rather than if they're bred by the vendor themselves. It's important to know if the vendor imports the shrimp, do they quarantine them? If they do, for how long? Do they apply any medication or treatments to the shrimp to ensure they're as healthy as they can be before they ship them out to you? What you don't want to find after you've made your purchase is that in fact, your vendor just imports several thousand shrimp, bags up your 20, sends them to you, never even looks at them. You want to get the best shrimp possible. You really want to be buying from the breeder. And that isn't always possible, but it may be the vendor you've chosen says they buy from a local breeder. It may be that they say they breed some, they import some. Start the conversation. The shrimp you're going to be buying, where have they come from? Are they home bred? Are they bought from a local breeder? Are they shipped halfway across the world? If they're shipped from across the world, are they quarantined? If they are, for how long? This is crucial information to help you work out whether or not you're going to end up with healthy, strong, vibrant shrimp, or whether you might just be getting some that are, that are shipped in in the thousands, bagged up, chucked out the door the next day, job done. 
combining this information with how interested the vendor is in communicating with you before your purchase, combining this information with the photos they're prepared to send you before you make your purchase. You, again, you're building up this picture of whether this is a vendor who wants to build a long-term business relationship with you or whether they're just interested in getting your money and job done. When my wife and I were selling shrimp, we only ever sold shrimp we had bred ourselves. We sold very few colours, three or four colours, but that was because we could breed them up and build good, healthy stocks of those three or four colours. We could have easily offered 15, 20 different varieties and just bought them in there. There are no end of people who will happily ship you shrimp in their thousands if you're prepared to pay for it. But that wasn't what we wanted. We wanted to breed and sell quality shrimp that meant we had repeat customers who were happy to come back to us time and time again. The number of times we would sell someone some red tree shrimp, probably their first shrimp they've had. Within a few months, they're coming back to us. Oh, we want some yellows now. We're ready for some blues now, whatever it might be. For us, it was about building a long-term relationship rather than get the cash in, job done, move on to the next customer. Now, tip number six is a really important one. And that is, how does the vendor package their shrimp to send to you? Shrimp are incredibly hardy. They can survive going through the mail, but they have to be packaged correctly to give them the best chance of surviving that journey. Now, typically, there are two different methods for packaging shrimp up. One is a traditional fish bag. You take it, you fill it perhaps two thirds with water, shrimp in, lots of oxygen, tie it off, and you've got that, that one third perhaps of air above the water, which allows for oxygen exchange between the shrimp in the water below and the air above. Nothing wrong with that. However, the problem there is every time the bag moves, the air and the water are doing this. They're churning, they're moving. This can be incredibly stressful on shrimp. This is how typically fish are packaged, but shrimp, they, 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 that constant movement in the postal system can be incredibly stressful for them. The other way to package them, the way we used to do it, was to take a breather bag. If you're not familiar with a breather bag, it's essentially a bag, you, you fill it totally with water, you squeeze out all the air, you tie it off, and then, I don't know how the science works, but essentially, the water doesn't leak out of the bag, but air and oxygen can pass in through the walls of the bag, meaning the shrimp can continue to breathe for, for days if they're in that bag. But crucially, if you take a breather bag completely full of water with no air, you can literally shake that and the shrimp, they don't move. There's no air in there to churn the water up. When we were testing our own shipping methods, we literally took a bag of water, a small piece of netting, that the shrimp can hold on to, 10 shrimp in there, nowhere, tied off. You'd be amazed how vigorously, there's no air in there, you can shake that bag and the shrimp do not move. It's absolutely superb. It's far less stressful on the shrimp, but it is more expensive for the vendor. Those bags cost us considerably more than a regular plastic fish bag. But if you want your shrimp to have the best chance of arriving to you in tip top condition, you really want to find a vendor who ships using breather bags. The other thing you need to check is, if you live in a cold area, if it's winter, does the vendor include heat packs? Do you have to pay for a heat pack? Is it included? Does the vendor not even offer them? Again, shrimp are incredibly hardy. They can survive an amazing temperature range. But if they're being transported through a frozen part of the world, if they're stuck in a, an airport warehouse all day long, you know, at, at incredibly cold temperatures, without a heat pack, there is a chance they won't survive. There is a chance that the stress of the drop in temperature will cause them to molt early, which can be, can be fatal to shrimp. Ask your vendor, do you include heat packs? Yes or no? If it's a no, do I need them? Can I pay for them? If it's a yes and they're included, that's a fabulous vendor. That's the kind of person you perhaps want to be doing business with. And again, you're stacking up all of these tips. Don't disregard a vendor because he doesn't give you free heat packs. If he does everything else superbly, then talk to him and say, well, can you put some heat packs? How much will it cost? He might say, you don't need heat packs because it's shipping via wherever. But taking time to investigate how the vendor packaged their shrimp gives you a picture of how likely they are to arrive to you in tip top condition. Now, tip number seven is don't go for the cheapest seller you can find. I think as people, we're hardwired to look for a bargain. We, we hate overpaying for anything, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should go for the $1 shrimp over the $4 shrimp because there may well be a reason these are only a dollar. Yeah, these are a dollar, they just get slung in a bag, whacked out whenever we can. We don't quarantine them, we don't even feed them, we chuck them out the door. These guys might be $4, but yes, they're quarantined for six weeks. They're fed good quality food. 
They're packaged in breather bags. Heat packs are included. They're shipped using the fastest methods in the area you live. You might save yourself 30, 40, 50 dollars buying these cheap shrimp, but if they all die within a week, that's money wasted. Buying good quality shrimp and paying the right price, not necessarily overpaying, but paying the right price, could be key to building a successful, healthy shrimp colony. Take some time, investigate your local marketplace. It might be that where you live, shrimp are only worth a dollar. They might be going out the door at a dollar a time order long. They could be $20 a piece. Take some time, look around at different vendors, compare who's selling what and how much they're charging. How long are they quarantining for? How do they ship it? I even asked the question, why are yours $4, $5, $10 a piece when these are only $2? They might give you some information you never would have considered and you think to you, that's worth the money. Equally, we all have a time in our lives when we have to go for the cheapest to get us started. I'm not judging anybody. I'm just saying don't always assume cheapest is best because when it comes to livestock, fish, shrimp, dogs, whatever it might be, cheapest is rarely the best. Now, as I've mentioned several times in this video, my wife and I used to breed and sell shrimp online commercially. And if you want to know how you can go about making $500 a month breeding and selling shrimp, watch this video next. Thanks for watching.